Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 251. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 246 to 251. Hey, in this trick we have a database and we have some sales reps and customers. And our goal, well, if we look down here, we have Chin, Amazon, 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 Chin, Fred Meyer, uh, chin fruit fun and our goal is to extract a unique list of sales reps and then within the sales reps a unique list of customer now at 250 we did this in basically five clicks with a pivot table and this one we want to see with the ridiculous uh, method uh, that we could use if we wanted to with formulas our goal is to get a table like this all the chins all the unique uh, customers all the Francines all the unique customers so let's go ahead and see this. It'll take a, a bunch of steps to get this done. So here's our data set. I'm going to actually add a few new uh, columns in order to do this trick. Now the whole, the whole problem is we it's easy to extract these um, unique lists, and we've even seen a formula that does that. Um, However, we have two, and there's a bunch of repeats here. So how in the world do we do that? Well, one way we can do it is to create an extra column and concatenate these two, right? So we'll have Chin Amazon, Chin Amazon, and when we get down to here, it'll be Chin Fred Meyer. And so that'll be one unique record and then two unique records. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. We'll just do an extra column right here, unique list of customers within unique list of sales reps equals, and I'm going to click on chin and then ampersand and click on or actually relative cell reference whoever the sales rep is whoever the customer is so we're creating an extra found the world I'm going to copy this down I can't just double click it because there's nothing here but watch this I can right click hide and then this little trick will work where I can uh, double click and send it down and then I can uh, right cl uh, highlight the two columns F and H and right click unhide all right, now we need to count because we have a chin Amazon.com. We can see down here we have chin friend Meyer. So, so far the count would be there's one and two unique records within unique records. All right, so let's do our little formula here for counting uh, unique values. We've seen this in other videos, a count if, and we'll click on this, shift colon, and we want to lock this first one. I'm going to hit F4, F4 comma and then we'll count this. What this does, this is an expandable range so it will be counting and every time it counts the first one it will be one so we'll have a column filled with numbers and the ones will tell us where the unique records within unique records are. Control enter, double click and send it down. So we can see when we get down to Chin Friend Meyer we have a one etc. Chin Fruit Fun one. Alright, um, let's uh, count all of the we're going to count the unique records uh, within unique records equals sum if. And we'll get that whole range. Control shift down arrow, F4 just to bring it back up. We don't need to lock it here. And what's the criteria? One. Right? So we're summing all the ones. And there it is, 54. Now we have what we need. Uh, we have a column, we have some columns with ones in it, and we can do something that we've seen many times, a formula that will extract records. And what we want is just these two columns, right? So we're going to start here, equals if rows, and we need to have a number increment so that we can say if whatever, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, as soon as that incrementing number is bigger than this, we need to turn it off because that means there's no more records. So we'll do K14, K dollar sign 14, colon K14, close parentheses. If that's less than or equal to this one right here, and that needs to be locked in all directions. Notice we set the sales rep and the customer up. So when we get to the field, we're doing an index function on. We'll just copy it over, and it'll move because why? Because the sales rep and customer are right next to each other. But that'll have to be locked everywhere. All right, so that's the logical test. And if that's true, then we want index because we're looking something up here based on some true, an array of trues and falses. All right, so the array, well, let's go get our sales column. 
our sales rep column. Click on the top, control shift down arrow, and I'm going to hit F4, but look, I need to hit it again because I only want it locked when I go down. When I move over to this other column, that needs to move to the customer range. Comma, and what's the row number? We'll do this trick we've done many times before. Small, and we'll say if, and our um, way to get all of the rows is to ask if this whole column here, control shift down arrow, F4, that needs to be locked everywhere, is equal to 1. Right? This gives us a bunch of trues and falses, uh, F9, right? <laughs> control Z. If, if any trues are there, then what do we want? We want a row, because remember, we're trying to deliver a bunch of row numbers to the index function. So the row of what? I'm going to select that same range again. It doesn't matter which one of these columns you use, actually. Um, and then uh, the problem with that one, of course, is uh, right now that's giving me row 11. So we need to have really one right there. So we'll go minus row of this, F4. And that gives 11 minus 11, which is 0. So then we add 1. All right, so there's going to be our rows. The uh, if says true or false. This delivers all the rows, right? So this whole part here is nothing but a bunch of rows. But we need to have the first smallest row, the second smallest, the third smallest. So as we copy the fo formula down, it starts extracting the records. So that's where we'll close off this if. And you can see this screen tip right here. And we get to our array, for which is that whole thing for the small comma, and we'll use our same trick for incrementing numbers and formulas right there, control C. And so it'll give us the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest, which in essence will be row one. And then the next one will be row whatever this is, 25 or whatever. So that's the clever way of extracting. Finally, we close off the small. We have our row for index, so we close off that. And finally, we go comma, blank, blank for uh, this first logical test, because once we get past 54, we don't want to show anything. Close parentheses, and the keyboard shortcut for an array formula is Control Shift and Enter. We copy it over one, and um, we can't double click, but we can do this trick right click. Oh, no, that won't work because this is shorter. Yeah, so we're going to have to drag this one down. Oh, what a bummer. There's actually other tricks if you know. If I knew exactly what the cell find destination range was, we could do another trick, but I don't. So I'm just going to drag. By the way, in 2007, they got away with that you, that dragging. You, we used to drag way past and then have to we go back and forth seesawing. 2007, they got rid of that. Um, if you don't have 2007, that alone is worth it. All right, and sure enough, uh, we have our values, Amazon, Fred, Fruit, PCC, and Truss, and if we were to compare in 250 when we did our pivot table, it looks like uh, we got the same values there. Pivot tables, about five clicks, about 30 seconds. Uh, this huge thing involved adding uh, columns of extra columns, a formula here, and then a big, huge array formula there. But there is how you do it if you want to do it with the formula. See you next trick.